I read two sentences in a book, and the first sentence was that we are the most over-medicated. I remember, I remember today, we're the most over-medicated, most over-surgery country in the world, and we're not the healthiest. Mm -hmm. uh, that was 40 years ago. It's still today, still true today, maybe even more so. Uh, the next sentence was that we everything we've ever needed to be our healthiest was locked within us. We need to unlock that to allow our, our health potential. You are listening to The Dr. Haley Show, the podcast dedicated to helping you optimize your health. Each episode, there will be an interview or a message to help you discover better health. We will be featuring health radicals on the show to bring new ideas to the table, as well as doubling down on key fundamentals to support you living your best life. Your host is no other than the founder of Haley Nutrition, Dr. Michael Haley. Dr. Otto Jenke is a chiropractor in Cortland, New York, where he maintains his practice at Jenke Family Chiropractic. He is the author of the book, You Were Born to Be Healthy. Yeah. Dr. Jenke, thank you so much for joining me here today. Oh, I'm curious, what inspired you to write a book? That's a good question. Um, first of all, thanks for having me on. Thanks for having me on. Second of all, it was... Uh, What's amazing is when you go to write a book and then you 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 put all this time, energy, and focus into it, and then the editor sends it back to you, and you're like, "Did did I ever take an English writing class? Did I ever take an English class? Did I pass an English class? Because it sure as hell didn't look like I did." Uh, all the editing was amazing, and how this uh, this 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 point doesn't doesn't make sense to that point over there. It's like, uh, you know. Um, it had been a dream of mine to write a book for years, and I got to a point where it was either I was going to write a book. I'd been thinking about it for years, and I was either going to write a book. So I took one long, cold winter up here in upstate New York, and uh, I said to myself, either I was going to do this or I was going to get rid of all the information in my head. So I would go exercise hard for 45 minutes, then go up to the local Corton State University and plop down and write for two, three hours, just, just mind bomb, just unload. And um, I use it. So I use it as I use it as a business card, to tell you the truth, more than anything. We give it to all my practice members, all the new patients. And I, I use it as a business card. And it's um, wasn't simple, but it's been very effective for me. You know, we chiropractors have a message for our patients. We want to teach them these principles that we live by, the principles of health and where it comes from, and they don't get it overnight. It's good that they have a book to read. You were born to be healthy. You're, you know, it's it's a fundamental aspect. I, I think we're all born to be healthy. We, we're all born with a 100% level of health. Your 100% is going to be different than my 100%, um, but we're all born with a level of health. And I think it's adamant upon us. I think it's absolutely fundamental for us to unlock that, uh, unlock that health potential as much as we can. And, you know, and, and stop screwing around with it. I mean, you know, we have a, such a reliance upon someone else taking care of us. And it's, um, it's not, it's everything we've needed is it's packaged perfectly right there. We got to unlock yeah. that and let it rock. I, I agree with you. And it also reminds me, and it's part of our chiropractic philosophy, uh, something that I got from a recent guest, Terry Tucker, on a previous podcast. Not only were we born to be healthy, he said he talked about how so many people go through their life thinking that they have to accumulate and what can they add yep. to it, where he kind of says, I believe you're born with everything you need and, and you're not here to gather, but to empty out into the world. You have everything you need. I, I listened to that uh, that podcast, and uh, you know, none of us take it. We we don't take it with us. None of us take it with us after we pass. And so, uh, I'm a firm believer we should love as much as possible, live as much, laugh as much, have as much as possible right now. But uh, and then actually just empty the tank. I mean, just let let's go. Let's have fun. Yeah, yeah, I I love it. That's part of our chiropractic. Uh philosophy you know we love to serve and give to our patients and and bless them 
And I don't know about you, but it gets me all charged up. Every time I see someone's life improved, that excites me. That's better than the paycheck. It, uh, the paycheck helps, but the, um, having, uh, having those people in your office, and I, and I, you know, I, I tell the, the classic story of my, my best week in practice was, was not one that was, I couldn't even tell you what the finances were that day, how many people we saw or anything. I can't even remember those numbers, but it started off as, as a, one of our practice members had been here for years. I saw his mom, I saw his, his family, his brother, um, and he came in one Monday morning and he was here before we actually got going. And I said, I said, what's going on today? And he, he was a big old bear of a man. He had a, he had a baseball mitt for a hand, you know? And, um, he, he said, uh, that his wife had passed that night, the previous mm-hmm. night. And well, we knew she wasn't in great health and she was probably going to pass. And it's always a shock when someone does. And, um, I, uh, I adjusted him and uh, I said, I'll see you at the, at the services. And I went back to my office and I cried. That was on Monday. Yeah. But then on Thursday, a mother brings in her newborn. I mean, not even not even 24 hours old newborn. Brings her by the office and said, she had been a, a, you know, a member, practice member of ours. And she said, would you, would you check my child? Yeah, I'd love to. And so at the beginning of the week, we have someone passing and we, we have at the end of the week, you know, someone coming into life and um, you, you can't beat those times. And that that was that was by far the best week in practice. And it was it's it's we're we're, we're filled up with like that on a regular basis. And that's just that keeps me going on every day. Wow, that really is cool. You know, when you I, I want to know a little bit about your perspective on chiropractic what it is. We all have our little different, you know, takes on what it is and what it is that we do. But you talked about the baby. I'd love to know about chiropractic for our babies and what have you seen? I actually have a favorite Um, infant story myself. uh, You know, it's, you know, it's, uh, I don't have children. And so what was unique was um, in my first years of practice, I referred all, all babies out to uh, other chiropractors in a uh, couple in Ithaca, and and until a until a practice member says she's pregnant and says, "Listen, I bring my whole family here. I want you to take care of my baby." And I was like, "I was like, well, <laughs> okay." Uh, and I, I said to myself, "If the International Chiropractic Pediatric, the ICPA, ever comes anywhere near, I will take that uh, certification." And they came to Syracuse, which is thirty miles away. I was like, "You son of a gun! You guys called my bluff on that." And I went up there, and um, in a lot of the classes, I'd be the only male, or one of the few males. I'm definitely the only one over. I guess I was probably 45 or 50 at that time. I'm 61 now, um, by far. And one of the one of the young docs there says, "You know, you you you're great with adjusting these uh, kids. Uh, you know, your your children must love you getting adjusted." I, said, I don't have ki- I don't have kids, and they're like. What are you doing here? I said, because I, I see kids and I, you know, there's a dem- demand for it. Um, if we can help those kids to be as healthy as possible for as long as possible, we've resurrected a generation. We've given a generation what they, what they need to be as healthy as possible for decades to come. So uh, up in the Northeast up here, last, this last weekend is, is planting your garden weekend. And, um, so I went and got plants. And so what will we do with plants? Well, we give them the best soil, the best fuel, the best structure so they can be around for as long as possible. We're doing the same thing with, with those babies. And everybody was asking me, aren't you scared of Justin Baby? No, the, Justin Babies is simple as compared to the 95-year-old who I had to adjust out in my parking lot because he can't get in, the, you know, get in the office. So the kids are fun. Um, I've never, we just had a two-year-old here who, uh, I love having the kids draw me on the, on the chalkboard. And, uh, I love that. Then we're going to get a calendar out of that coming up. That's just, it's, it's, it's so much fun. Now for the listening audience, why is chiropractic important for a newborn? Very simple is that, uh, I want to make sure that they always have symmetry of motion. So do they turn their head equally and, e- equally and evenly left and right? Do their arms, do their legs, do they twist and turn equal and evenly? Second of all is that for in my practice, 
when the baby's born, no one checks their nervous system to see for those symmetries. They check, do the APGAR scores, literally to see if they're alive and able to thrive. Well, there's a big difference between being a sur surviving and thriving. We're going to see how the baby can do. And knowing that the baby will be born, the most physically traumatic thing they've ever been through is their own, their own birth, is we ought to make sure that they have the best opportunity to be their best for decades to come. And um, I think we are well suited to do that. Yeah. I want to drive it home with my favorite testimony when it comes to adjusting an infant. And I was only in practice maybe a year. Brand new. <laughs> One of my patients brought his girlfriend with his girlfriend's baby to see me. She was completely skeptical of sure. what chiropractic could do. See it all the time. And this baby had... Herb's palsy, and I, I, I actually, that's the one, that's the waiter tip deformity, right? Did yep. I say that right? Yep. Forget it. It's been a long time since I've been in school. Herb Duchesne. And, and I, you know, I, I completely blew it because she handed me the, the, the baby and I, I, I put this infant on my shoulder and I accidentally put my hands in exactly the right place. And as soon as I did that, I felt something give away. Now, adjusting infants, are it's a very gentle thing. Oh, easy. So here's someone that's skeptical. I haven't even done an exam yet. I just put the infant on my shoulder and happened to go to palpate the neck and felt something give away. And I knew I was done. So I handed the baby back. So I had this skeptical person looking at me and so she says, oh, you're done. That's it. Oh, yeah, that's going to fix a lot of things. And this infant hasn't used, you know, the, the one arm yet at all. And she had the baby in physical therapy. She called crying a couple hours later, yep. using her arm for the first time. She wasn't doing push-ups or anything like that. But the mother knew something was definitely different. And all of a sudden, her baby is now using her bad arm. Yep. It's not about... Pain. And you mentioned symmetry of motion, which can not only translate to just how the body functions physically as far as strength and symmetry, but everything inside the body, the organs. Everywhere. Yep. So you know, that's uh, one of my favorites. My, uh, uh, I am, I'm, I'm the poop whisperer in that uh, they always bring their babies to me when their babies aren't pooping. And uh, you adjust them, and then the, the parents call you from the ride home, and they say, you know, you wouldn't believe, but the baby Ashley just pooped her pants. It was great. Oh, the whole car stinks. You're like, well, you know, congratulations. I'm, I, I'm happy for you. I don't know if that's a great thing. They're like, oh. Uh, the number of times that happens, and it happens in, in offices all over America. I know it does. But uh, it's, um, I mean, I'll be I'll be straight with you on this. If I'm not if I haven't gone to the bathroom, you know, by eight o'clock in the morning, I'm calling the police department, fighter, I'm calling somebody. I can't imagine being a being a four month old who hasn't had a bowel movement in two, three days. I mean, I just I can't even that's you know, it'd be like six months for me right now. <laughs> it's like well, that's astounding. Are you enjoying the show thus far? One of the many health secrets that we have covered on the show is all around aloe vera. Specifically, drinking raw aloe vera. Our aloe vera has helped our customers effectively heal their gut, increase their intestine health, lower inflammation in the body, eliminate and or decrease acid reflux, have glowing skin and hair, and so much more. Now, as a frequent member of our audience, you will be exposed to exclusive specials and coupon codes for the awesome products manufactured by Haley Nutrition. That's right, for simply being awesome and tuning in, you can get a mini discount to help you optimize and better your health. To see how we can help and support you on your health journey, tune into the episodes and listen for coupon codes that you can use at www.haleynutrition.com before you make your orders of raw aloe vera. Once again, it's www.haleynutrition.com. Now, back to the show. Uh, love seeing them. Um, we, we see families. I see them from pregnant to much, much older. I see them. I see them all. It's fun. Yeah. Now, where did you go to chiropractic school? 
Paisa Form University, Davenport, Iowa. I went to Palmer. Awesome. A lot of people, um, they think, you know, chiropractors, they get a few years of school. What was education like for you? How many years of college? How many years of chiropractic? Uh, so I did, uh, I started with three years. Uh, so this is this is a, a typical of me. Three years in a uh, two-year program uh, at, a, at a community college. And then I uh, I traveled around for a while, came back, and I did uh, one year at the Corton State, um, and that was just prerequisite. So I took I took my physics, chemistry, organic chemistry, anatomy, physiology. I did that for a year. I didn't do much besides that, and I was uh, honestly way over my head. But um, when you have a goal and a dream and a vision, you do what needs to be done, no matter what the obstacles are. And when I got into chiropractic college, uh, I failed my first test and I thought to myself, um, I'm not meant for this. This is, I'm over my head. I'm in deep water. I uh, put it down and, and uh, it, it didn't come easy to me. Um, I'm, a, uh, I'm a grinder when it comes to this stuff. A lot of people are much, much, I mean, much more astute and they learn quicker than I do. I don't. Um, so it took me, it was tough, but uh, I graduated honors, graduated with honors in research and um, it was it was hard. It was hard, but it was it was cool. I mean, it was cool. The amount of education I got from there was was an immense. But the thirty two years after that have been bizarrely wild uh, with the amount of information that I've had to learn. Uh, yeah, so you do it. You do it. Yeah, it's you're always learning. It's a definitely a continuous thing. You know, for me, I never learned a lot of the medicine. I know a lot of the conditions that people have and the diet, their diagnoses. I think we did, we were taught that pretty well in school. Uh, when it came to treating with medicine, we never really dug into that. We never really learned it. We treat with manual treatments with hands, chiropractic, moving bones to decompress the nervous system so people's bodies can function better. But there's a definite equivalence from like a medical school and a chiropractic school, very similar classes, but we don't treat with drugs. <laughs> it's the, the first year they, take, they talk about the first year, year and a half is essentially the same in both of those. You get through your primary sciences. Um, you know, we all took cell physiology and like, I mean, <laughs> all that sort of stuff like what, what? Uh, but then you get into the cool stuff, which is being able to help people. And, um, uh, uh, you know, I, I've, the reason I got into chiropractic was because of, um, I used to live in Las Vegas and, uh, my brother said, you should be a chiropractor. I didn't know what a chiropractor was. Uh, he was a PT and he said that you should be a chiropractor. So I, I used to go to the library a lot in Las Vegas for three very important reasons. One is that, um, uh, they always ran the AC at the, at the library. So that was very important because we we're in Las Vegas. We didn't run that in my apartment all the time. Uh, I could read any book or magazine I wanted to for free. Very important. And then um, I could take a nap anytime I wanted to. So those are very important reasons why I, I chose chiropractic at this time. But it was, I read I read two sentences in a book. And the first sentence was that we are the most over-medicated. I remember, I remember today, we're the most over-medicated, most over-surgery country in the world, and we're not the healthiest. Mm -hmm. uh, that was 40 years ago. It's still today, still true today, maybe even more so. Uh, the next sentence was that we everything we've ever needed to be our healthiest was locked within us. We need to unlock that to allow our our health potential. I, I I closed the book at that time. Said, "Son of a bitch, someone else feels the same way I do." I had to scramble back to find the page. I got that little uh, the little golf pencil with a little piece of paper they used to have at libraries. I got it and I wrote down the toll free number because we didn't have long distance. Um, and uh, it was Palmer College of Chiropractic. Uh, I literally ran back to my apartment, called them up and said, hey, uh, I said, hi, uh, this is Otto. Uh, can you send me everything you have? I'm coming to your place. And they said, have you applied yet? I said, applied? This is the first time I even called you, much as applied. And that was in like the springtime. And by the fall, I was back, back here taking my prerequisites. And then within a year or so, I was uh, in Davenport, Iowa. And it was, uh, when you find your gang, you find your gang. Was it BJ Palmer that said something to the effect of if you took all the medicines and threw them into the ocean, it would be good for mankind, bad for the fish. 
Bad, terrible, terrible for the fish. <laughs> terrible for the fish. That wouldn't be good. Palmer <laughs> School of Chiropractic, the first school of chiropractic, I believe, right? Was it? Uh, correct. Uh, 1895. Um, first was uh, uh, D.D. Palmer, short D. time D. after that. D.D. Palmer, short time after that, uh, started a, a school a couple years after he discovered chiropractic. Wild, um, the, the origins of chiropractic. But uh, the whole basis is how can we unlock those those how can we unlock your best best health potential? And um, you know, I mean, I, I I educate my patients on fundamentals, which is if if you want the best out of me, and you want the best out of my care, and I ask them straight like this: Do you want the best I got? They're like, Yeah, of course. I said, Then I'm gonna need the best out of you too. And they, what do you mean? I said, I'm going to need you to start exercising. If you don't exercise, you got to start exercising. Because when you exercise, what I do works better. I need you to start eating this way. Well, why? Because when what I do works better when you're doing that. I need you to find a regular system of sleep, a regular routine of sleep. Uh, why? Because when I when I do what I do, it's going to work better when that is. And so I need you to do this, 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 this. And when we start putting that all together... It, it's like, dude, you're, you're dramatically better. Not just the aches and pains. The aches and pains for me are the, are the easy stuff. I know it's some people think that's the, it's like miraculous how we can help with that. That's the easy stuff. I got to help you prevent the next time from happening. And then two, get you back into living so you can have the next number of decades be your next best decades. And uh, it's, it, it's not hard to do. It's, it's different, but it's not hard to do. And once you start reaping the benefits of that, Dude, game on. Let's go. Let's do more. Yeah. But don't do all of these things too good because you might not need me anymore and I don't want to go out of business. Well, you know, the funny thing about it is we re I, I reframe my patients and tell them that, um, you know, it's like saying that if you do all those things, you don't need your dentist anymore. It's, it's um, nope. We help people. I have many patients who have been with us for decades and uh, they do that. I mean, here's the funny thing. I asked a uh, group of patients at 8 o'clock, um, 8 o'clock in the morning, we see shifts of patients. And I asked them, I said, um, how long have you been here? They averaged, they had averaged being there for 10 years, averaged. And I said, why are you still here? I said, do you have any marks and pains? They're like, yeah, of course we do. I said, so why are you still here? And they said, it's not because we have aches and pains. It's because we're able to do what we want to do when we want to do it. And one said, uh, th this one stuck with me. Deeply. They said, we don't hold you responsible for our aches and pains. I said, what? They said, we don't hold you responsible for that. That's our responsibility. It's your job to help us to be our best so we can go do that stuff. And I said, that was the most logical thing I've ever heard in a long, long time. And I wish I had said that. But that, that's, that's the truth there. Um, you know, here's the reality. I, I think I've got magic and lightning coming out of my pizza forms. But um if you, if you are, if you're a skier, you're going to wipe out. Um, you can't hold me responsible for that. I'll help you afterwards. I'll help you before, but I can't help you when, because you wiped out. But my job is to help you to be up on that slope even more. We give people that opportunity. They're like, let's go. Let's, the game on. Let's do that. Are you doing upper cervical or full spine? Um, I'm a very posture based doctor. Uh, so some of that has to be full spine. Some of it has to be upper cervical, knowing that uh, the dense amount of mechanoreceptors are up, the posture receptors are up in this area and then around the, the hip joints. Um, I focus on it and uh, we find where the, um, the subluxation is at. Let's go. Yeah. And what techniques are you using? So mostly biophysics, chiropractic biophysics, but it's um, it's the uh, the doctor uh, the doctor Otto Janke method. Perhaps you've heard of that. <laughs> sure, <laughs> just now. <laughs> yeah, it's but real I know big. It because there's it's the doctor Michael right Haley method. <laughs> exactly. My my technique is very big in this office right here, right here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you, you know, well, I, I'm kind of familiar with uh, toggle technique. I yeah. had a specific toggle table when I started, but I. Sure found myself adding a little side posture to that. And yep. eventually I was a full spine chiropractor. <laughs> yep. You know, you, you find out where the body isn't, isn't functioning its best and uh, you adjust. And um, I have many friends who are upper cervical specialists, but I, I also, I mean, I have a ton of people who just full, who are full spine. It's uh, you know, 
I think there's five joints in the body which need to be assessed. TMJ, C1, C2, T1, L5, S1, and then uh, the feet. And so we assess those on a regular basis. Knowing if we can mechanically get you working better, you're neurologically going to be dramatically better. You know, I had my TMJ fixed by a black belt. True story. It yep. was out. I got hit on this side when I was about 10. Yep. I had problems for about 10 years. And when I was about 20, I got hit on this side. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend those uh, be your uh, your pathways to being better. Uh, but we see a lot of people with TMJ problems. It, it You know, you look at the TMJ, the intricacies of that joint alone, because you have to be able to talk like this all the time, but then you have to be able to distinguish between a very ripe banana and, you know, you know, cashews. I mean, it's astounding how different that joint can be and how the intricacies and how, how the innervation of that, of that joint is just, it's wild. And it's, mm. it's, I mean, it's, and it's duct taped together. It's really, it's really a, it's a bad joint to be doing is what it does, but it's phenomenal. And you know, you get that uh, aligned people are, man, they, you open up their life. Yeah. What are some misconceptions people have about chiropractic? Uh, well, geez, Louise, 32 years in practice, I could do, we could do four hours on this alone. One is um, I'm not a medical doctor. And I said, I never claimed I was. Uh, none of my advertisements show that. Uh, I have a very, so here's my reality is that I have a, I'm a genius in that amount of information. Um, and that is chiropractic. Uh, number one is, number two is they they think, they wonder if we, they, they wonder more if we prescribe. And nope. Um, I could have been an MD if I wanted to, but my philosophy was that we are the most over-surgery, most over-medicated country. I don't think me being a better um, writer of prescriptions or a better surgeon helps our country to be healthier. I think we need to find, we need, we need to go way before that. Um, I, you always get to ones, am I a real doctor? I said, no, I don't know. Pinch me, find out. Um, but you know, it's, um, I think people, I think people are, want someone who can help them to be better. I think people are literally dying for that. And we should we should give them the opportunity to be healthier. And the studies um I did my I did a TED talk last year and TEDx talk and we are looking at uh maybe is it thir 13 or 15 prescriptions a year Americans are filling. Every man, woman, child, every man, woman, child. And so I don't take any prescriptions. That means there's a guy, there's a guy in Passaic, New Jersey who's honking down like, you know, 30 prescriptions a year. I, I don't know if he needs them. I don't know if he's healthier for that. I don't know if he's going to be pushing his longevity for decades to come by doing that. I don't know. But I do know that the, there's a miscommunication in the body when you start having all those chemical reactions going on. And it's impossible. It's impossible to find out what those chemical reactions are. But because it's so intricate and so long lasting, but it's, um, I, I think we should give people an opportunity to be healthier for longer and better without medications, without surgeries. Understand that when the house is on fire, you need to call a fireman. But after that fire has been put out, we never call architects. We never call people to come rebuild the house to be better again than it was before. That rarely happens. And that that's our healthcare system is that we are, we have fantastic firemen, but we have, damn few architects to help the house to be better. And I think that's really my specialty is, uh, I'm, and I call it the architect of health is we're going to be your, we're going to be your leaders. Or I'm, I'm going to be your chiropractor for next 80 years. I'm not going to be around, but I'm going to be your chiropractor. <laughs> that's great. And speaking of 80 years, how does chiropractic tie in with longevity and what is longevity? So longevity, if you, if you look at longevity in, in the definition and, uh, and, uh, online, it, 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 they call it uh, someone's long life. It's like, if that wasn't the most boring definition that there ever was, I don't know what is. So in my, in my company, Empire Longevity, we put it as the definition as the act and intent of being so healthy that you leave something great behind by what you've done today. Now that definition makes me want to get up and push myself just a little bit more every single day and, and expand out to help more people. It's Dr. Haley interrupting this podcast to give you a site-wide coupon code for use at HaleyNutrition.com. 
You can even use it on our frozen aloe vera, and we hardly ever do that, especially when we're running out. Our freezer is almost empty, but we're working hard to convince our farmer to get out in the field for another harvest. You can say this coupon is a little bit of a faith move. So head over to HaleyNutrition.com and use the coupon code FAITH, F-A-I-T-H, for a 7% discount off your entire purchase. The code will work throughout the month of June of 2024. Now, back to the Dr. Haley Show podcast. And so longevity is how can we help you to have more better years? Not just more years, but more better years. Because if you had the opportunity to be around for more years and you're incapable of laughing, living, and loving, the question is, then why, why are we even around? But if I can help you to be around for more and to laugh more, live more, be more, um, that people are, are literally knocking down the doors for that. I think chiropractic is massively suited for that in that if we can get the connection from here to all around, get your body functioning better, you have opportunity. Now we have the basic. Now we have the basis for that to be able to be done. And um, I'm, my last talk was at uh, Sherman College of Chiropractic, and I talked about how if we can influence heart rate variability, which is a testing I do in my office on a regular basis, um, I've been doing it for 19 years. If and heart rate variability has a direct link, if when your heart rate variability is strong, your opportunity for longevity for those more better years is greatly increased. Well, I showed that chiropractic adjustments can improve heart rate variability, and um, I'm working on a big yeah. program with that with a big um, agency. I'll say because I can't. I need say a little more that. information. What's heart rate variability, and how do you measure it? Heart rate variability is a tool that's been around for decades. So some of you, some of your listeners have used maybe an aura ring. Mm -hmm. uh, we use a circle ring. Mm -hmm. um, those are used to actually measure heart rate variability and to maybe your eye watch has it also. And it measures that. Or what's that one? Whoop. The whoop will do that. And they measure it to find out the adaptability of your nervous system. So it measures are you someone who thinks, are you in sympathetic drive, that fight or flight? Do you think there's a bear in the room? Well, if you think there's a bear in the room, it's going to dramatically change the way you function. Even if you feel great, uh, if, there, if there's a bear in the room, how would your digestion be? Your sleep, you're able to repair, be able to concentrate, be able to focus, be able to have deep, deep thought. All that would be altered. Wow, that's someone who has their foot in the gas pedal. Well, someone who has their foot on the brake, that's a parasympathetic, um, they can never mount a charge against anything. And so you look at this and, and we measure it by, we use a system in my office called the Insight, the subluxation station. So we get, we get your heart rate, we get your skin conductance, that's your electricity gets through your fingers, and then your body temperature. They take that, put those all together, and they come up with heart rate variability. Uh, you start looking at that, and studies have been done for decades on this stuff. And uh, a lot of it is if we can get your heart rate variability to be optimized, not high, not low, but optimized in that sweet spot, you, you function. You function mm -hmm. so much better. You're able to adapt. If you can't adapt, here's the reality. You, you aren't going to be living. If your, body, if your body didn't have the fever, then the bug would run wild that caused the fever. If your body couldn't repair a, a, a cut, you would die. If your body, here's, a, uh, let's get a little bit gross on this one. If your body didn't either have the, didn't throw up or have the diarrhea, then the bug would run wild on you. So those are all adaptations, but those are instant, those are momentary uh, adaptations. Now we need to have adaptations for, thousands, millions of moments all through your life for, for years to come. And that's where heart rate variability come in. Do you, do you believe that there is a, a bear in the room? Well, I look around right now, there is none. That's not what I asked. I said, do you think there is? Does, does your nervous system think there is? And so we measure that on a regular basis. And um, in 2019, I was published in a journal, uh, the Journal of Medical Cases, on a case study with a woman post-breast cancer. And we watched her literally 
resurrect. She came she came back alive, and we we measured that with heart rate variability. We adjusted her the whole time. She wasn't able to exercise, massively fatigued, digestion a mess, brain fog, all the, all the classics. They're post breast cancer, post chemo, and uh, we watched her come alive, and it was phen- phenomenal, phenomenal. Matter of fact, I just saw her um just saw her this week, and it was uh it's neat stuff. And, and so if I'm going to talk to you about nervous system. I measure nervous system too. And it's uh it's non-invasive, takes minutes to do, and it's a phenomenal piece of information. So how long would it take for someone to see a consistent change in their high rate variability? And maybe you are measuring with the subluxation station. Uh, when are you going to see those results? Do you uh, check a month later? Uh, are the results instant with chiropractic? Is it so- like more lifestyle change? So if, you know, the, some of the studies that have been done and I've gone through this studies for a long time, um, you look at some of them, some look at a very short period of change and they look at, okay, we adjusted and the heart rate variability got better. My, my question always is how long did it stay that way? I don't want to be the band aid to see that get better. I want to watch it for months, years. My study was over, I think six or eight months. 44 adjustments over that time. And people ask me why 44 adjustments uh, because I need to stop the study and then publish the information. Uh, you know, I could have still had it done. We just did the heart rate variability with her this week. Um, but so this is a, a baseline. This is a baseline for us. We're also going to instruct you upon meditating, breathing, all these other things that are going to help you get there also. But uh, we need to get a baseline of of what it is, what your neurology is, so then we can add those other things on that those things work better too. Yeah. When's the last time you got adjusted? A week ago, two weeks ago. Great. I go, and and again, I don't do it because of aches or pains. I do it because when I am, when I'm better, I can, I can show up my office more often, more often better. Uh, the classic is I have missed because of illness, I think four days in 32 years because of illness. Uh, and all of them were, I think all of them were, all of them were like food poisoning. So at, ask me how to be healthier, but don't ask me where to go to dinner. I mean, it's like, <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. I, I like similar to you, you know, I, I don't get sick. I did get and I got, I got, but uh, I didn't know it. Oh, okay. I knew it, <laughs> but you know, I was fine a week later, yeah. uh, but it was, a, it was a rough week. It was, you know, definitely fever and low energy and, uh, chills, but my wife and I, we both, we both got it. We maybe missed a couple days of work. Um, yep. we still worked through it and I'm no, I'm not practicing. I'm not seeing patients. I do practice. I see some patients, but I have a very small practice. My nutrition sure. company occupies most of my time, the yep. website and fill in orders. So we didn't have to worry about being around people and giving it to anyone. Yep. 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 Uh, what do you, what do you do as far as uh, being active? Are you playing pickleball or what do you do that at, at your age? What, I, what should you be capable of doing? Uh, any damn thing I want to do. Um, I don't, uh, they just, they're, they're, they, they just made pickleball courts down the street from me. I'm not in pickleball yet. Here, I'll be a trade show. I just don't get it. I, I mean, I know people are big, huge fans. I just don't get it yet. Uh, it sure seems to me like, well, I, I just don't get it yet. Um, I love to lift. I lift four times a week. Um, I'm cardio. Uh, we're doing a thing in my practice in my office right now with our patients, actually with people from around America. It's called the summer five, the summer 500. And, uh, you make a, a pledge versus yourself that you will do so many miles between, uh, Memorial day and labor day. I don't care if it's bike, swim, pogo stick, run, walk, uh, row, whatever it is, but you, you fulfill this and you do it. And so we engage people for this time. I'll run a couple of five Ks uh, this summer and uh, it's not pretty. I look like someone who is uh, being tased while that's happening. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I push myself and do this. Um, I love working out. Uh, it's I, It makes me think better. It helps my emotions. I function better. I sleep better. There's a number of things that when people ask me, so people, people ask you this also in practice, 
what can I do outside of here? And so what they're really asking me is, what can I do outside of here to not be here? And, I, and so once I realized that, it changed my answer. Sure. And it's like, well, fantastic. Once again, do you want the best from me? Yes. Okay, then I need the best from you. Is I need you. I'm not going to give you low back exercises. If you're not exercising, I'm not going to give you low back exercises because I need you to start exercising. I need you to start having regular sleep. I'm not going to give you exercises for your core if you're not sleeping well, if you're not if you're not exercising, if you're not in a for me a plant based plant forward diet, if you're not going through some kind of mental emotional uh rest and focus. I said, I need you to have to do this, 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 because the, when you do that, what I do just works so much better because you're yeah. going to work so much better. And so, um, you know, I, I love exercising. I sleep like a banshee. Uh, I eat well, I have fun. And, but, uh, you know, and I, and I also love to do, cause I'm in the finger lakes of New York cause we go hiking a lot and it's, um, being out in nature. We take, uh, my greyhound out and it's, um, uh, it's one of those aspects that I don't know how people don't do that stuff. And I'm going to be one of those people who's going to be doing that well into my nineties because that's how I'm playing the game. I'm playing the game for the next 60 years, uh, 50 years, 40 years. I'm playing the game for that long. And so to understand that, what do I have to do now to make sure I'm around for that long? And so it's this, yep. this, this, and, and one of my, I think of my previous landlord who goes always, hiking and he's in his early nineties. It, it, it's it's beautiful and it's um we discover more places you know the apps that tell you where the places are at to go hike and it's you know again we take my dog and it's 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 great and um i can't imagine missing all that yeah well you know i couldn't imagine missing pickleball <laughs> well <laughs> I'm, I, I'm sure I, i'm gonna be one of those guys who once i get into it, i'll be like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's I didn't know until once I played and it was like, well, this is actually a lot of fun. And my wife got addicted rather quickly too. And two, three times a week now, just this yep. year, we just yep. started earlier this year. Yeah. That's it's all, a good that's, time. That's how all cults are. That's how all cults are. <laughs> <laughs> just so, once or twice, know, it, it, you know, I, I actually had a chiropractor in here on the podcast and he was, talking about treating pickleball injuries and yeah. you know he's yep. he plays pickleball he's really into it uh, i thought it was pretty neat and that was probably the teaser for me that maybe yep. spiked a little bit of an interest and i tried it and everyone I, the courts are always packed and everyone kind of knows each other out there it's like a, yeah. like you said it's like a little cult a little it's a cult little. everybody knows it is <laughs> it's uh like i said they they're they're they're, they're making courts like two blocks from my house it's like it's right there it's like okay okay i'll go i'll join you'll you'll join you'll you'll you'll, you'll be one of us I'll, <laughs> see it is a cult <laughs> yeah I, I don't have all the gear yet and the headbands and the special paddles and night you know and yeah. the special shoes i don't have all that stuff yet but uh it's getting tempting though they're getting you they're getting you in <laughs> You know, what are we going to find in your book? I haven't read it yet. Uh, what is, what's your favorite chapter? How does it help and inspire people? I'm Dr. Michael Haley, and you're listening to the Dr. Haley Show podcast. Just when I got to the good part, our connection got disconnected. I was asking Dr. Otto Jenke about his book, You Were Born to Be Healthy, and what the devil meant for bad, God used for good. I was inspired to go buy a copy, read it cover to cover, and share with you uh, sort of a summary, my take home, what I got from it. You see, the book was about the areas of our lives that we can improve to better improve our health. They were broken down wonderfully, inspirational to make positive changes for your health but that wasn't really the takeaway you see everything was written with such love and and passion and excitement and oddly that was the take home that our lives can be so much better our health is not just 
for ourselves. It's for the people around us. The energy that we have, the excitement that we have, the love that we have, that stuff is contagious. So when I'm choosing to make better decisions for myself, it's not just for me. It's for everyone I come in contact with. You were born to be healthy by Dr. Otto Jenke. I highly recommend it. There will be a link below the video. Thanks for checking out this episode. See you next time. I hope you enjoyed that episode today on the Dr. Haley Show. Make sure to hit subscribe on whichever platform you are listening to this. If this episode made you think of someone, go ahead, take a screenshot, and share this exact episode with them. You can catch the show notes for this episode on www.drhaley.com. If you want to geek out with Dr. Michael Haley on other radical health topics, be sure to check out his YouTube channel where he posts exclusive video content. All the details are at www.drhaley.com and we can't wait to hang out with you on the next episode.